Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always. And today we're going to take a look at the newest weapon in the FA-18C's repertoire here in DCS, the Joint Direct Attack Munition, or JDAM. So we'll take a look at both the pre-plan and target of opportunity modes the JDAM has to offer. There are a number of advantages and disadvantages when it comes to using JDAMs over laser-gutted munitions. The first off and most important advantage is the JDAM is not hampered at all by IFR conditions and can be used in any weather, day and night. And as you can see here, we're on the ramp at NTTR in the middle of a rainstorm with some thunder going off in the background. A second massive advantage is the ability to hit multiple target points via a single aircraft on a single pass with different weapons programmed to hit different target points. This paired with the complete fire and forget nature of JDAM makes it a potent weapon on the modern battlefield. However, JDAMs will not replace laser guided weapons like the Paveway series due to the fact that JDAMs cannot hit a moving target, have a larger impact CEP, and require very precise planning and weaponeering and are susceptible to human error due to the large amount of data transfer and input required by JTACs and pilots thus making JDAM susceptible to very tragic blue-on-blue -blue and collateral damage incidents. JDAMs are best suited to fixed, known location targets such as bunkers, buildings, and other installations and require double and triple checking of, of coordinates and precise weaponeering for best kinetic results on target. JDAMs of course come in three flavors here in DCS for the FA-18C, the GBU-38, which is a 500 pound weapon, the G GBU-32, which is a 1,000 pound weapon, and the GBU-31, which is a 2,000 pound weapon. On our jet today, we have four GBU-38s, and we will program three pre-planned targets into three weapons, and do a target of opportunity shot on our fourth weapon. So, let's go ahead and get her started up, and we will put in our target points and get going. Alrighty, we've got our F-18C all started up here on the ramp in Nellis Air Force Base. And my biggest recommendation that I could make to you for using JDAMs in the F-18 is to always make sure you put in your pre-planned target missions before you take off. So as you're waiting on the ramp, waiting for wingmen to start up, uh, waiting for taxi clearance, always make sure you get that done. Because it's a very head down in the cockpit operation. You don't want to get caught by a SAM or an interceptor with your head down in the cockpit. So we'll go ahead and zoom in on our left hand DDI and our UFC, and we'll pull up our storage, storage page on our left hand DDI. You guys should be very familiar with this by now, and we'll select J82 for our GBU-38s. You see the timer starting to count down for the alignment of the INS system in the weapons. We're going to go ahead and leave our E-Fuse to off for now to make the weapons as safe as possible as we taxi and fly out over a populated area and we'll go ahead and go into the JDAM display. We'll make sure the mode is in pre-planned, and we'll go into our mission page, and we'll start inputting our different uh, mission coordinates for our three missions. So the one thing we need to worry about here is a target UFC for now in this current implementation, and we'll go ahead and start putting in our positions, starting with latitude, looking at our kneeboard to make sure we get the correct coordinates, so 372419, enter, and then for the decimal, 96, enter again. And now we can see it pop up on our left DDI right there. Uh, we want to make sure that we've got that right so that we don't hit a uh, the wrong target. So longitude west 116-1433, enter, and the decimal, 45, okay, cool. We've got that there now. And now we'll go ahead and pop back out on our target UFC and come back in so that we can include our elevation in feet. That's what I have written down on my kneeboard. 
And this bunker for our first mission is going to be at 5,413 feet of elevation. And we'll pop back out again on the UFC and input our terminal uh, guidance section. We can input a heading, an angle, and a velocity for where we want it to hit that target. Right now this is currently not implemented, but I'm kind of weaponeering this to hit from the same uh, run-in angle from our IP point to the target with a heading of 010, an angle of 45 degrees, and a velocity of 700 feet per second. Like I said, these really don't matter at the moment. And we've got pre-planned one all set up and ready to go. So we'll switch over to pre-plan two and do the exact same thing. We'll input our latitude and longitude. North three, seven, two, four, zero, zero, enter, and then our decimal. This is going to be a part uh, hip helicopter on the fake ramp in range 74 Bravo. And we'll go ahead and put in the longitude for that target. 116, 14, 28, enter, and then the decimal. For using JDAMs, I really recommend you have a notebook handy. I'm actually using an old kneeboard from my grandpa, so that kind of is kind of cool and works very well. And the height for this hip, parked hip, is 5,433 feet. And we'll go ahead and input our terminal guidance section. We're just going to go ahead and copy the last one, so 10 degrees of the heading, an angle of 45 degrees, and a velocity of 700. Right now these don't matter in the current implementation, but just kind of showing you guys how to input those. And pre-planned mission one or two is already good to go. So we'll go ahead and head to pre-plan three. This is going to be a second part tip on the fake ramp in range 74 Bravo. We'll do the same thing, put in our latitude and longitude of north. Looking at my new board here, 372. Four, three, zero. Enter and our decimal of eight three. Perfect. We always want to make sure we're double checking these coordinates because if you mess even one digit up, you can send the bomb way off course and hit something you definitely don't intend to hit, whether it's a uh, blue unit on the ground or uh, innocent civilians that are down there as well. So you always want to make sure you're double and triple checking these coordinates and, and making sure that if you do make a mistake, you hit the clear button and you make sure to correct it. So the height for the second hip is very close to the third one, or the, or the first one. It's 5,430. And we've got our three pre-planned targets all ready to go. And why don't we go ahead and start our taxi out to the runway and get started heading out to range 74 Bravo. We'll turn down the brightness of our moving map just a little bit. And we'll pop our left DDI back out to our HUD uh, repeater for takeoff. Alrighty, we'll see you guys up in the sky. Alrighty, we're up in the sky and we're heading out towards range 74 Bravo and our IP point at waypoint 1. We've got our cockpit set up the way I usually fly in a combat mission with our EW on our left page, our radar on our right DDI, and our SA page down on our MPCD. Now we're definitely going to be changing this up for our JDM employment. And first we're going to go ahead and bring our stores page up on our left hand DDI to double check our target coordinates and make sure that we re-select uh, our JDAMs as every time we select and deselect our JDAMs, the INS systems in those little bombs need to be realigned. So we're going to have to wait about two and a half minutes for that to be good to go and aligned. And while we're waiting for that and flying out towards our IP, we're going to go ahead and go into the JDAM display and double and triple check our coordinates. Also making sure that we get our E-Fuse turned on to instantaneous so that the bombs will explode when we hit our targets. And we'll go to the mission page and double check our coordinates for our target points based off of the coordinates that we have written down on our kneeboard. 
Like I said, it's always very, very important to double and triple check these coordinates to make sure that we don't accidentally kill the wrong person. Once you drop a bomb, you can't take it back. Making sure our coordinates are good and our altitudes are good. Don't really need to worry about our terminal guidance section just yet, as it's not really implemented. And triple checking our pre-planned target number three. So that all looks good. And we're approaching our waypoint one. So we'll go ahead and keep an eye on our alignment time. Right now we're at 04, which is marginal, a marginal alignment. We're going to wait until that shows us a good alignment before we even attempt to drop the weapons. We'll go ahead and move our MPCD to our HSI so that we can see our maximum range and minimum range rings displayed on our HSI. As well as being able to make a good uh, way to see how close we are to waypoint one, our IP point, as we can't see the uh, navigation data on our HUD when we have the JDAM selected. And we'll go ahead and just uh, realign our jet back onto our IP point as we wait for those INS systems in our JDAMs to align. And it looks like they are, so we got a good alignment. So we're good to go ahead and drop those weapons. We can see we waited just about two and a half minutes. We'll select pre-planned target one for our first drop, which is the bunker. With pre-planned two and three being two parked hips on the ramp. And of course we can step through the weapons that we want to drop on that pre-planned target with the step button in case we have a larger JDAM that we want to drop on that bunker which we don't have at the moment, which is okay. And we can see we're approaching our IP point. Once we hit that IP, we will be ready to turn inbound into our target point. We'll go ahead and drill that M the HSI in a little bit as well so that we can see our uh, maximum and minimum uh, range rings on our map a little easier. Just still continuously double and triple checking our coordinates and we'll go ahead and put our EW page on our right DDI so that we can keep track of any threats that may pop up as we run into the target area. Getting closer and closer. Always scanning the instruments making sure we're good to go in terms of navigation, fuel, threats around us, anything like that. So we'll go ahead and push it up to waypoint 2, our target waypoint, and we'll bring it right around to our targets. Our targets will actually show up superimposed on the ground with those diamonds. And we can see that little arrow also guiding us towards our designated target diamonds. And we can see I got pretty close on our terminal guidance section of our uh, pre-planned targets. Pretty close to 10 degrees, but uh, it should be fine. There's no, It's not implemented yet, as I said. We're passing through one minute till drop point. We'll go into our mission page and get ready to cycle through these. And as we cycle through them, we can see that diamond change position showing us a superimposed uh, position on the ground out there. And we can see our minimum and maximum range uh, rings show up on our HSI. I don't like to drop them right at the maximum range ring, uh, as it, the bomb can tend to fall a little short and be a little flat in its trajectory. So I like to kind of come maybe towards the, uh, about a third of the way towards the minimum range ring. Our bunker is off to the left a little bit, so I'm actually going to line us up more towards uh, pre-plan 2 and 3, which is the two parked uh, hips. And we'll, why don't we go ahead and put her into autopilot so that we can manipulate the views a little bit easier for you guys at home. And we can see that the target is now 14 degrees nose down based on the cues from our HUD. We are in range. 
And we're dropping our weapons. And three is away. So we'll go ahead and take a look at those weapons falling. We've got one bomb, two bombs, and three bombs. We'll give them different views so that we can cycle through them no problem. And we can see that the autopilot and the INS system of those bombs is working. And we can see that the weapon is totally unaffected by the cloud cover and the IFR conditions down low. As the autopilot guides it right to those coordinates through clouds, through smoke, through smoke screens, through anything. So we can see this bomb is guiding on that bunker off to the left there of the runway. And we can see the line of four park tips. And we'll go ahead and zoom on out and watch the bombs fall and hit. One, two, and three. Three direct hits. Look like we didn't have a large enough bomb to kill that bunker, but it works for the purposes of our demonstration because we got a direct hit right on that bunker, even though we probably didn't get a kill on it. So let's go ahead and head back to the cockpit and get started with the TOO mode or Target of Opportunity mode. For this mode, we're going to pretend that a JTAC has passed along to us coordinates of a stationary T-55 tank. So first thing we need to do is head back to our stores page and change our JDAM mode to TOO or ta Target of Opportunity mode. Do note that this can be changed in either the stores page or the JDAM display page. And next we're going to go ahead and create a waypoint for those coordinates that our JTAC passed to us. Because it's easier to see, we'll bring the HSI to our right hand DDI. And we will go ahead and scroll up until we find a waypoint that does not have any coordinates to it, which would be waypoint 5. And we'll go ahead and hit UFC and start inputting the position of that waypoint, which it would be north 3724.00, enter, and west 116.14.00, enter. So we got those coordinates in there. And we'll go ahead and do a elevation in feet of 5,436 feet in altitude above sea level and now we've got that waypoint in inputted into our uh, navigation system and we'll go ahead and bring our EW page back to our right hand DDI we'll zoom into our MPCD and we'll go ahead and waypoint designate that new waypoint that we made creating a target waypoint and we can see now that we have those minimum and maximum launch rings for the JDAMs on our HSI down there. So we'll go ahead and bring the jet on back around. We'll take her out of autopilot. We'll keep the auto throttles on at a steady 400 knots for now. And we can see we now have the JDAM symbology again for our fourth GBU-38. Do note that this mode is not going to be nearly as precise as we cannot input decimals into our navigation system as of yet in the FA-18C. So we've got 30 seconds till uh, we are in range and why don't we go ahead and throw her back into autopilot to help us out a little bit so that we can manipulate the weapon view again. And we'll be launching our last GBU-38 at the stationary T-55 on the airfield down there. And we can see we're definitely coming in within range. I'm going to wait just a little bit like I did before in order to drop my weapon. And weapon away. And why don't we go ahead and watch our JDAM cruise on through the clouds once again and hit that T-55. We can see that the JDAM has a much farther range than an LGB as the 
autopilot of the JDAM is much, much smoother as it guides it to the target. It's not using a bang-bang type of guidance, which uh, wastes a lot of energy that an LGB has. If this were using a bang-bang guidance to get to its coordinate point, the range would be much, much shorter, similar to an LGB. However, the very nice, smooth path of the autopilot and INS system of the JDAM allows the incredibly long range of a free-falling bomb that you see. So, we'll go ahead and zoom out, and kaboom. As you can see, we did not put that bomb right on top of that T-55. It's actually definitely not nearly as precise of a method of targeting it as of now. I believe that Eagle Dynamics has said in the future that decimals will be something that you can input into the navigation system of the F-18C in the future. And the TOO mode will also be the way you target JDAMs using the uh, targeting pod that should be coming next month for the FA-18C. So once that comes out, I'm gonna, definitely going to be doing a large video on the targeting pod in the FA-18. And I definitely can't wait to make that video for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and reset my cockpit back up to the way I want it to egress away from the target area and potentially have to fight my way out against SAMs, interceptors, etc. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and consider donating on Patreon. It all comes back to you guys. Thanks a lot.